Welcome back to AP U.S. History. This is Part 2, Chapter 12. We had uh, been talking, just started talking about the Lowell system, the Lowell girls. Um, uh, this uh, system employed young female girls, single girls, uh, gave them a chance to get out of the house and make a living for themselves. There were very few opportunities for women at this time working outside the home. Most of them were homemakers. Um, anyway, uh, we'll be talking about Francis Cabot Lowell. Uh, he's going to build the first dual textile mill in Waltham, Massachusetts. And what I say, a dual, they were making the thread and then using the thread to weave that into cloth. Um, so this is a, a big jump, a jump in technology. Um, so a significant change, basically going from manufacturing at homes to placing it under one roof as a factory. This shows a picture of Watham, uh, the Watham system, Lowell. Um, first uh, coming up with this concept in 1814 and allowing young women an opportunity to work. Uh, the, the Boston Associates are um, going to help uh, Lowell uh, build a number of new plants. They're going to spring up all over uh, New England uh, because it seems to be the perfect place to manufacture textiles. Uh, the Boston Associates were also involved in railroads, insurance, banking. Uh, it was one of the first true conglomerates in the United States. That is, a lot of different companies under one ownership. Uh, the Lowell Girls uh, will be eventually replaced by water and steam. Um, but for a brief period in American history, women are allowed to work in factories uh, under close supervision. Um, this picture shows the low girls at work. Uh, who were they? Well, they were mostly young, white uh, females, unmarried, uh, working long hours uh, in these textile mills. Uh, they were Irish immigrant girls working in these uh, mills. Uh, women housed in, um, in the same building close to the factories. Uh, why did New England become the center of the Industrial Revolution? Well, there were several reasons. Uh, one, it just didn't have the soil, really, to, to grow huge agricultural crops or a large amount. Uh, so uh, the land was turned to some other use. Uh, it also, one of the other things is that there was available labor uh, moving into this area. Uh, they seemed to have the money uh, to build uh, these factories and then export them because they had seaports. Uh, they had the fast-moving rivers that provided initially water power and then it's going to be changed to steam power. Uh, why didn't the South industrialize? Well, there were several reasons. One, they didn't have the money because uh, most of it was tied up in slaves. Uh, local consumers were too poor to afford a lot of the finished goods. Uh, so that explains some of that. Uh, by 1850, the industrial output uh, had exceeded agricultural output. Uh, what factors contributed to this? Well, uh, going back as far as 1807, uh, the Embargo Act, which just tied up all uh, shipping into American ports, couldn't you couldn't ship overseas, and you couldn't import, and so Americans will have to depend on themselves to manufacture the things they need. The Non-Intercourse Act, which said that we were just going to trade with uh, all countries except France and Great Britain. Uh, and eventually, we're going to fight the War of 1812, uh, which will cut off manufactured goods from uh, Europe. Uh, and it forces us to depend on ourselves. Another reason that America became, and particularly the, uh, this industrial output it, it seems to grow is the creation of factories or corporations um, which gave people an opportunity to invest in a business but with limited uh, liability. Uh, you didn't have to put your whole life savings into the business. Uh, just whatever money you put into the company, that was all that was at risk. Um, businesses uh, that wanted to be corporations uh, didn't necessarily have to go and get a charter from the state legislature. 
they came up with the concept of free corporations uh, statutes that would allow uh, businesses to start up much uh, more easily. All they had to do was just apply for the right paperwork. As far as the northern workers were concerned, um, there were some skilled workers, craftsmen working in the factories, but they're going to be replaced uh, by unskilled workers who are going to operate the machinery at a very uh, well at a lower cost. Uh, what could you expect if you were a worker in the north? Well, long hours, uh, low wages, few or no breaks, and a pretty unhealthy um, climate. Uh, here's a little song that was created. I'm a factor grill, everybody filled with fear from breathing in the poison air. Wishing for windows, I'm a factory girl. Tired from 13 hours of work each day, and we have such a low pay. Wishing for shortened work times, I'm a factory girl. Never having enough time to eat, nor to rest my feet. Wishing for more time, I'm a factory girl. Sick of all this harsh conditions, making me want to s sign the petition. So do what I ask, for because I am a factory girl, I am hereby speaking for all the rest. Well, uh, a little bit of complaining there about the working conditions in the factories. Uh, workers were forbidden by a lot of form uh, unions initially. Um, there were a few strikes, but uh, sporadic. Uh, the courts are going to change their opinion about unions um, as time moves on. Um, Women and children work six days a week in factories. Uh, it's estimated that uh, by in 1820, half the industrial workers were under the age of 10. Uh, certainly, they were abused, uh, mistreated, uh, which were going to lead to child labor laws in the 19th century. Uh, gains for workers. Uh, well, they did get more political clout simply because they had the right to vote. And because they could have the right to vote, they could insist that politicians uh, pass laws that would help them. Uh, they wanted a shorter uh, working day, 10 hours, better working conditions, public education for their children so they could make a better life for themselves, and the end of debtor prisons. And uh, these uh, demands are going to be uh, listened to by politicians because these people have the right to vote. 1840, uh, Van Buren established a 10-hour workday for federal workers, which is a, a giant step forward. Now, here's a court case that has appeared on the AP exam, the Commonwealth versus Hunt in 1842. Uh, this was in Massachusetts. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, stated that unions were legal. Uh, unfortunately, this is more symbolic than anything, but it does point to the fact that unions are going to be recognized uh, by the government, by the courts, um, and they're going to pick up strength, not so much in the 19th century, but more in the 20th century. Uh, some early union movements, the Working Man's Party in 1829, we talked, you saw that on the DBQ, uh, and they're going to be demanding more uh, rights. Uh, the unions were typically local, small, social, and very weak. And as these working parties uh, come together, um, for the most part, they're pretty much ineffective uh, prior to the Civil War period. Uh, the transportation revolution is going to uh, get kicked off in the United States. Uh, and it's going to be things uh, cheaper to haul around transporting things from one area to another. Uh, one of the things that uh, was important was m moving resources around. You have the west growing the grains and the livestock, the south growing the cotton, and the east uh, having the factories. Uh, transportation situations were pretty poor at the time, very few roads. Uh, very expensive to transport things on the roads. Now this transportation revolution, what, what did that entail? One of the first things that we're going to look at are turnpikes. Uh, they're going to be developed in uh, the 1790s. Lancaster Turnpike was the first one built in Pennsylvania. It was 62 miles long. 
Uh, it was a nice road. Uh, the people who built it uh, charged others to use it. And it will become very profitable. And a lot of other people will get into building roads and charging people for the use of it. Uh, a lot of the state's rights oppose the federal uh, government uh, giving aid to local improvements. They felt that uh, uh, it should be done by either private businesses or the state itself, not much federal government aid. Uh, this is the first turnpike. This is in 1790, the Lancaster, and again, uh, this is in Pennsylvania. By 1832, nearly 2,400 miles of road connected major cities. Uh, this is a pretty significant improvement. Uh, of course, uh, eastern states are going to be opposed to the road building because they feel that it's going to be too easy for the uh, working man to get to the west. And the west will, uh, because of it, will grow pretty fast and they'll have more uh, political clout than the east. And uh, we're going to stop right there and we'll pick this up next time in part three.